the Toronto Blue Jays riding a four game winning streak. All four of those wins have been comeback victories. Hi again everyone. Welcome to an afternoon of Rays baseball with Brian Anderson. Dwayne Stats. good to have you aboard as the Rays and the Blue Jays go at it here. The Rays taking the first two games of the series this afternoon. Chris Archer goes to the mound for the Rays trying to make it a sweep. He has not given up an earned run since opening day. As dominant of a stretch as we've seen from Chris Archer, and you're right, Dwayne, the last three starts span 19 and two thirds innings, and he's given up just 10 hits, four walks to go along with 25 strikeouts, one unearned run. That is it, and it's again been the fastball and the slider that has led the way. Oh, by the way, against his Toronto team, 10 career starts, he's given up two earned runs or fewer in eight of the 10 starts. So when you talk about going for a series sweep, I don't know who you'd rather have out on the mound with Chris Archer. And this pitching matchup, one of the best young right-handers in the game and Chris Archer against one of the best veteran lefties in the game, Mark Burley. Burley pitched against the Rays and beat them on April the 15th. And then Archer followed with his performance the following day in Toronto against the Blue Jays. Rene Rivera will be behind the plate today, and boy, the Rays have liked what they've seen from him. We'll get more on that when we return all leading up to the first pitch.
homestand against the Toronto Blue Jays, going for five in a row on this homestand. Here's what Rivera has dealt with this year, learning a new pitching staff, coming back to the American League after being in the NL the last two years, and really dealing with the fact that he's the number one catcher for the first time in his career. A lot on his plate, mostly defensive stuff. Now the offense is starting to come around. We've seen it in this homestand. First of all, they'll walk off base hit to get things wrapped up against the Boston Red Sox in that series. The singles, it turns out, down the left field line. Then on Friday to open up the series against the Toronto Blue Jays. A big, loud home run to center field against R.A. Dickey. He has shown a better bat lately, and here's the hitting coach, Derek Shelton, on that. But he had the big hit on uh, Thursday night, the walk-off, and then Friday night with the home run, being in the middle of the field, which is something we've been working on. He's been out for early work. So it's good to see. I think it's coming along. He's having more consistent at-bats, so uh, excited for him. We, we knew he was going to be aggressive in counts. We knew he, you know, he had some power. So I think we're seeing it. He just has to be a little more consistent in making sure he controls the strike zone. But uh, really happy with where he's been the last couple of days. Rivera, a great defensive catcher, has contributed at the plate lately, and today he will catch Chris Archer going for four consecutive starts without allowing an earned run. Less than three and a half minutes until the first pitch. Enjoy all the action. Archer against Mark Burley right around the corner. Give you back to Tropicana Field where they send Chris Archer to the mound. The Rays wrapping up this series against the Blue Jays in the final game of the homestand. Archer looking for victory number three on the year. He'll face this lineup for the Blue Jays, presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Devon Travis leads off, followed by Russell Barton and Josh Donaldson. Edward Encarnacion hits clean up the DH in front of Justin Smoke and Michael Saunders. Dalton Pompey is in left. Kevin Pillar in center. Ryan Boyd is the shortstop today, batting ninth. 
Taking the mound this afternoon for the Tampa Bay Rays. Right-hander Chris Archer, you know, in the open, we highlighted the three-start stretch that he has been on and how dominant he's been. Well, in the midst of that stretch was a start against these Blue Jays up at Rogers Center where maybe his best game of the year. He went seven innings, gave up two hits, no earned runs while striking out 11 Blue Jays. Let's take a look at the defense as it lines up behind Chris this afternoon. Brought to you by BMW. In the outfield left to right, we have Brandon Geyer, Kevin Kiermeyer, and Steven Souza Jr. Across the infield third to first, Devin Longoria, Tim Beckham, Logan Forsythe, and James Loney. Renee Rivera will be behind the plate. All set to play ball with the rookie second baseman, Travis, in the box in the first pitch of this game from Archer. Presented by Pitch Penny, and it's a call strike. Popped up. That's going to carry foul out of play. Manager John Gibbons wasting no time getting Devin Travis into that leadoff spot. Jose Reyes not in the lineup. And as hot as Travis has been against the Rays and overall during this season, you see the numbers right there. Why not? It was a home run, one of five home runs. Travis has hit off to a great start in his rookie year. Big, big matchup. Travis had a single or doubled his first time up, then a single in the second inning last night, two hits to extend his inning streak to 11 games. Well, it's that ability to use the whole field. And what we've seen, we've seen him hit some home runs down the left field line. We've seen him drive the ball to right field with authority. That on strikes. Slider. Strikeout number one. And we've seen him overmatched by the Chris Archer slider. And you know what? Don't feel bad. He's been doing this with regularity. Look at the depth on that pitch. He throws it so hard. The spin is so tight. You know, even in slow motion, like right there, you can hardly pick up the seams. That just shows you how quick Chris Archer is able to spin that breaking ball. Well, the catcher Russell Martin up in the order. Just the fastball mid 90s, and that's where Archer has lived most of the time with that fastball. Oh. And two more heat at 95. Just during the course of this afternoon, just watch Chris Archer mechanically. Tall, lean, lanky, keeps the mechanics simple, stays over the rubber a long time. I'd like to say drive the ball downhill, but sometimes he'll airmail it. Hit the bull. Well, it's one and two. They're trying to go up in the zone, and that's, that's <laughs> a little high. That scared the usher. <laughs> hey -oh. Instant cardio workout down there. Yeah. <laughs> a little tap. Rivera will grab it. He's angled and the throw to first. Martin's out of there. Well, in each case of the first two hitters, the slider gets the out. But boy, what a trip it is to get there with that 95 mile per hour fastball. Listen, the, the, the slider gets all the accolades, the fastball does all the dirty work. <laughs> Here's Josh Donaldson. Donaldson had two hits last night. He's been hot. Got off to a little bit of a slow start at the plate, but red hot since then. He comes out swinging. Strike one. That 95 mile per hour fastball with a 90 mile per hour slider. And as a hitter, you know you've got to start it early because of that fastball and how explosive it is. And the slider, the break on it is so late, you just don't have a chance. Liner in the center, and that's going to be in there for a base hit. That was a 97 mile per hour fastball. 
And Chris Archer not happy with himself. This pitch caught a little bit too much of a play of the play with a hitter up there who's trying to protect now. He swung through two pitches, and this pitch leaks back middle, and Donaldson just able to drop the head and shoot that thing into center field. So two out single gets Edwin Encarnacion up there. It's down and away. Travis struck out. Martin out catcher first. Then the base hit by Donaldson. We cut the foul ball back. One and one. Archer has averaged 95.2 miles per hour on his fastball this year. And he's been able to sustain that velocity throughout the game. It does not wane in the later innings. That's what is so impressive. Encarnacion could not catch up to that fastball upstairs, and it's one and two. Low slider biting down two and two. Such a familiar refrain. Chris Archer, you know, he's a guy that'll use the whole strike zone, occasionally elevate the fastball, but when he gets ahead, especially of a right-handed hitter, he is thinking down and away, whether that be with the heater, the, the slider to put him away. Go to three and two on Encarnacion, who lays off the slider. Well, ever since that fastball to Donaldson that caught a little bit too much play, Chris Archer not happy with his location. Those last couple of breaking balls just not in the zone long enough. And that's the one thing that he can do with that slider keep it in the zone for a long time and then sweep it out. The last two have been out of the zone, out of the hand. Runner goes on the 3 2 pitch, and it is ball four. Fastball didn't miss by much, so with two outs, the Blue Jays have two men on base first here in the first. No, and the one thing that you want to do if you're Chris Archer, and you can be unhappy with your pitch location, don't show it. Yep. Don't let that other dugout and let those other hitters feel that you're not happy with yourself out there. You know, they're going to know that by the fact that you walked a guy. But the body language is saying, I'm frustrated. I'm not getting the pitches to my location. No reason to give them that information. Well, here's Justin Smoke. He's three of seven in his matchups against Chris Archer. Takes a fastball for a strike. And, you know, he's going to get a little visit here by Rene Rivera. You know, that, listen, Chris Archer's an emotional guy. And occasionally you're going to throw a pitch and be like, mm, you know, I didn't want that to go there. And that's fine. But when it's three, four, five times during the course of a sequence, mm -hmm. a little too much. Well, that's one of the great things about Rivera. From the first time he showed up in camp this spring, he's been that kind of catcher. Yeah. And now they have the jump on Smoke. 0 2. The dirt blocked there by Rivera. A couple sliders on the last two pitches. So that one foul. You know, right now, Chris is just trying to get that release point on the slider a little bit more consistent. We've seen him bounce a number. That one stayed up just a little bit. 
that's one of those things sometimes you fight yourself early in the game to get everything clicking. And then once it does, look out. Got the first two men. He's giving up a single and a walk. Now the one two. And he got him. Cut the mess. Stayed with a slider and got him on strikes. Two strikeouts in the inning. No scores. The Rays come in to hit. Their starting lineup presented by your Southern Ford dealers. Brandon Geyer leads it off, followed by Steven Susie Jr. And as Drupal Cabrera DHing today, Evan Longoria coming off four hits last night cleanup, followed by Logan Forsyth, James Loney, Tim Beckham, Kevin Kiermeyer, and Renee Rivera. On the hill is Mark Burley, and as you know, he wastes little time out there. Pitch sky deep into left center. Pilar going back to the wall. He's going to leap. And that ball is gone. Geyer hits it out, and the Rays lead 1 0. Boy, after seeing Pilar rob Tim Beckham of a home run. In Toronto, you're never quite sure how high he's going to leap. Geyer hit it a ton. Well, and the only the only giveaway was there was no celebrating after he came down from the wall. Little missed time on the jump right there, and that's what cost him. That ball just over the top of the wall, and when there was no showing of the baseball by Pilar, you knew he didn't have it. Down to third, Susan Jr. is out. Donaldson to smoke. So following the home run by Geyer, Geyer's first home run of the year to give the Rays the lead. Sousa went after the first pitch and bounces out third to first. Well, and that's what you see a lot of teams doing against Mark Burley this year, going after that first pitch. Almost a 30, a little over 32% of the time swinging at the first pitch. It's a high percentage, but they know that he's going to be around the strike zone. They also know that he's not going to be able to outstuff them. Cabrera fouling it back. Well, we have a contrast, as we mentioned, a young right-hander, veteran left-hander, hard-throwing right-hander, soft-throwing left-hander. You've got a guy who archers, a swing-and-miss guy. You've got Burley, who's a contact guy. Pitch popped up, smoke in foul territories after it, two gone. Yeah, I really don't think that you could get two starting pitchers on opposite ends of the spectrum in almost every way. That's I mean, right. truly. Yep. Pretty good start so far for Mark. Three starts, three wins, three quality starts. Opponents average 
at 315 high. However, with runners in scoring position, just 176. Kevin Longoria looks at a strike. Kevin, a 295 average in his career against Burley. It's foul. It's Charlie Montoya off his spot near the coaching box at third. That's the one thing with Mark Burley, you wonder if he's going to be able to sustain, you know, giving up a lot of hits, a lot of base runners, but with runners in scoring position has been so good. But 176, how long can that stay there if everything else is above 300? The Blue Jays have scored a lot of runs in his games as well. There's a ground ball going to go through the middle. And Longoria coming off four hits last night as a base hit his first time up today. Well, let's take a look at the Blue Jay defense as it lines up. Brought to you by BMW. In the outfield left to right, we have Dalton Pompey, Kevin Pillar, and Michael Saunders. Across the infield, third to first, Josh Donaldson, Ryan Goins, Devin Travis, and Justin Smoke. Russell Martin behind the plate. Want to know the count to Logan Forsythe. Geyer has given the Rays the lead with his first home run of the year, his first career leadoff home run at a game. Fly ball, short right center. Saunders in and out. Travis ball off his glove. Longoria is going to be waved home, and he's going to score without a play. Now there, there was a, a misplay out there by Devin Travis twice. Number one, the ball off the edge of his glove. Yeah, we saw that get a run off a Longoria ball down the line in yesterday's game. But then watch this. As this ball goes off the glove and he tracks it down, no sense of urgency in thinking about Longoria. He just gets it. He's going to throw it back into the infield. And Longoria, of course, running with two outs. He's going to come all the way around to score. Travis went after that ball, picked it up, and just threw it back into the cutoff man near second base, almost with no thought that Longoria was going to be able to come around all the way around and score. Forsyth winds up at second, and we'll get a double out of that. The Rays have a 2-0 lead. James Loney came off the bench last night to deliver that big hit in the eighth inning. One strike to count. Popped up. Joins the shortstop. Shallow center makes the catch. Rays on the board with two runs. Brandon Geyer's leadoff home run started it. And it's 2-0 Tampa Bay.
started. And at another run. The Rays did on the base hit by Longoria and the double for Forsyth off the glove of Travis. And here's Michael Saunders stepping in, leading off the second for the Blue Jays. One ball, no strikes. Chris Archer, a couple of strikeouts and a walk and a hit allowed in the first. One and one. This is the left handed bat of Saunders, then Pompey and Pilar. Yeah, he's been finding spots for that changeup. And then he's been throwing it mid 80s. That one had great arm action. And that gets him up in the count. And that's something he'd like to throw more. The other pitches have been so good, makes it difficult. But last year, where it was about 5% of the time, it's been up 8, 9, 10% of the time this year. Straight, straight call. Fastball at the knees. T Mobile game changer. And how about this streak? For Chris Archer, three straight starts with no earned runs. Matt Moore, Alex Cobb, and Archer with the streak active right now. What's it going to be like when you get those three guys back in the same rotation at the same time? Mm -hmm. Well, that's the thing about this club. With all the injuries, their idea is to stay relevant. They've done more than that to this point. Tied for first in the division. Pompey fouls it out of play. Well, we've gotten an up close and personal look at the entire American League East over the first three weeks of the season. Have gone through everybody once, and now the Toronto Blue Jays for a second time. Well, you see what's happened there, and we talked about it early, BA. There was some concern, well, you're going to play the East so much. Well, that's not the worst thing because nobody's running away with this thing inside the division playing each other. No, and that's you know that's what I was going to say. When you now that we've seen them all, you you talk about a winnable division. You know, we knew it was a flawed division coming in, but now that you've seen it right out in front of you, you say, I'll tell you what, this team, every bit of chance as everybody else. Not to mention with all these guys coming off the disable list, and, and you're right. I mean, it's all bunched up right now. Who's going to make that first run to kind of to to jump out there? But. No one, I don't think, is going to be running away from this with this division anytime soon. And you really have to believe that the team with the best and most consistent pitching and with the ability to catch the ball behind that pitching has the best chance. And here's what's happened in the American League East. Look at that. About 500 across the board. Yeah. You know, and we, we highlighted last night the fact that in the American League, the three worst starting rotations as far as ERA goes are within the division. Mm -hmm. And you've got Boston, Baltimore, and Toronto right at the bottom. Forsyth in second handles the ground ball by Pompey. Two gone. And, and as you well know, that's one of those trends where if it continues, you cannot stay in the race. Yeah. You can't slug enough no, to overcome the toll that. it takes. When your starting pitching doesn't give you deep quality innings, the toll it takes on the rest of the pitching staff is big trouble. You start to you tear up that bullpen as far as innings pitched. They wear down earlier. They're put in bad positions. Your offense feels that much more pressure to have to go out and you know score a ton of runs and granted the Blue Jay offense has done that. How, how long can you sustain that? Yep. Want to know the count to Kevin Pilar. It's tough in baseball nowadays to go out and continually win eight to seven. Ooh. This is the fastball. Ninety five and it's one and one.
foul back coming into this start for the year. Over half the fastballs Archer's thrown have been 95 or better. And as you mentioned earlier, he has been able to sustain that throughout his starts. Doesn't give you a whole lot of time to, to fit. You just have to react. That's what makes that slider so much better. Tap to third. Longoria is coming on the move, and it's a one, two, three second. Strikeout, two ground outs. Bottom of inning two coming, two nothing Rays. Dot com at bat, the number one app for live baseball. Get MLB.com at bat for your smartphone or tablet. Tim Beckham leads it off. One ball, no strikes. Beckham, Kiermeyer, and Rivera against Mark Burley. Foul ball is going to carry out a play, and the count is. One and one. Tim Beckham came through last night with a double at the eighth inning, barely missing a home run. Well, he could be sitting at five right now if it wasn't for Pilar in the second pole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's still out there. They haven't removed it yet. There's a butt <laughs> attempt, and it's going to be foul out of the reach of Martin. Wanted to. How about this with Beckham's 10 runs batted in? He's done so much damage as a pinch hitter, gets a start here in this game. 10 RBIs. Sousa has 11. There's your leaders. Yeah. And with two strikes where he is right now, you just saw the numbers there. Just sit back and enjoy. Two and two. Still a two two count with a foul ball. Full count, so down one and two. Now it's three and two. Kevin Kiermeyer in the lineup today and waiting to hit next. And a cut to miss. Had him out in front on the three two change. 
Well, he he got number one for Burley. Battled him back to full. You know, it's almost like a hitter gets in his mind. Burley's not going to walk. He's going to throw a strike here. Be ready to swing the bat, which is a good thing. But you see that changeup off the plate the entire way. And here is Kevin Kiermeyer getting a start against Burley. Two out of eight against the veteran lefty. One and zero. The count. Desmond Jennings left the game after the seventh inning last night because of soreness in his left knee. That's the same one that kept him out the final month last year. He's not in the lineup here. Kiermeyer is in there in center field. Two two. Lifted toward left center field. Pompey back for it. And he drops it. Kirbar is going to wind up at second. He had that play right in front of him. Thought about three for just an instant. But Pompey recovered after dropping that fly ball. And how about this outfield play? We've seen in this series for the Blue Jays. Well, we've seen Steve Tollison have a rough night out of left field in the opener. He was designated for assignment. This is a routine as it gets. The eyes come down. You're assuming that ball's going in, and it's right off of the thumb of the glove. Kiermeyer hustling gets to second. Actually thought about maybe heading to third before peeling back. It's been that kind of a series for the Blue Jays. Scoring opportunity Rivera at the plate. And there's a strike. Well, one thing that we've seen from Burley now this first time through the lineup in early whether it's the cutters to the righty or the fastballs in to the lefties trying to keep these hitters from diving out over the plate. Fly ball center field. Pilar is there to make the catch. Kiermaier will have to stay at second. You know, Burley's stuff is not overpowering, but he has shown the willingness to pitch in, and he has to. If he's going to be a, a middle of the plate away guy, guys are just going to lean out there and, and put great swings on all of his pitches. So he's pounded him in early tonight. Yeah, that's today. a great lesson for pitchers, you know, who maybe drop a little velocity. And they try to stay away all the time. Can't do it. No, not not at the big league level. You cannot pitch to half the plate. Now you can pitch to half the plate, maybe the majority of the time. To you know, but you've got to pitch guys in from time to time. Show them in and pitch in. Make them honor that pitch. Make them honor the entire plate, or it's going to be short nights for you. Yeah, you just you give up the odds if you don't. And it, it really becomes. You, know, you talk about this game being a percentage game, and it really is. Same thing about how much of the plate you're going to use. Right on. You know, you're going to give up half of it. You're giving up 50 percent. Yep. Yep. And guys, guy, there are guys that are just unwilling to pitch in. Mm -hmm. You know that. That's why guys like Archer, you know, Oda Rizzi, Smiley. When you start to think about why they're so successful, and yeah, they've got good stuff. It's not overpowering stuff. They use the whole strike zone. Yeah. They're in. They're out. They're up. They're down. I mean, they make you cover everything. And strike three call. Geyer caught looking, and the Rays miss an opportunity. Through two, two nothing, Tampa Bay. The Rays and Budweiser.
Chris Archer, Mark Burley got in a little bit of a discussion the last time the Rays were in Toronto. Chris Archer hit a couple of the Blue Jays earlier in the game. Then Evan Longoria was plunked by one Marco Estrada, his college teammate. Here's what Archer had to say about the situation. You know, if somebody hits our franchise guy, I'm going to step up and say something. Um, and that's really, that's really all it was. I said, you know, for what? Why? Um, outside of that, there weren't really any, any comments made, and, you know, we just left it out there. And I think that's the best way to handle it, you know, like clearing the benches and stuff. What does it accomplish? Nothing. To further your point about pitching inside last inning, guys, Archer said, I have to establish the inner half of the plate. If they were upset about me hitting players, it was just a misunderstanding. Back to you. Yep, I think uh, that pretty much sums it up. Goins takes a pitch inside, and then part of that conversation, whether you throw hard or not, uh, you're going to need to uh, use both sides of the plate at times. And Archer pointed out that if you if you looked at the situations where both those players Martin and Encarnacion were hit by pitches certainly not a situation where you're going to go look for somebody to hit Kiermaier under this one out there in center field that's the first out in the third you know the, the Blue Jay reaction to that had nothing to do with intent on Chris Archer's part they're baseball guys they're smart enough that it was a frustrated team mm -hmm. they were on the verge uh, you know well on their way to losing three out of four to the Rays at home in their home opening series yep. and they were frustrated and you've got a guy throwing hard and he's pitching in and he clipped a couple of guys and nobody's happy about that but they know there was no intent there and so then they're going to come out and hit your big guy you know, you're going to hit Evan and, and they got him in the hip but that was not to Archer throwing at anybody or even thinking that he may. That's just a frustrated team. And Chris is 100% right. You, you pitch in, you pitch in off the plate. You know, when you pitch in effectively and you can pitch in off the plate, move some hitters back a little bit, it buys you margin for error on the outer half. You don't have to be as fine. And so that's what Chris is doing. That's what every pitcher should do. Well, it's part of applying your trade. The, the key is, is when you do move that guy off the plate, occasionally you double up in there. You know, a lot of hitters will say, okay, he just threw me up and in. Now he's going low and away. Well, now you double up inside. Now they're not sure. One and two. Travis chases the slider. Out for the second time on that pitch. Well, and, and you know, pitching in. Look at the swing there by Travis. Just standing upright, not diving out over the plate. Look at him, reaching. That's what pitching in does to a hitter's swing. We've seen Travis diving out over the plate, driving the ball into right field. There was no dive there. Here is Russell Martin, the veteran catcher. A ball, no strikes to Martin. Hit a home run last night, his third of the year. He's swinging the bat better after getting off to a slow start. It's one and one. Martin went one for his first 24. Since then, has hit a little over 290. Fly ball right center. Kiermaier as Souza ducks out of the way. So to one, two, three, third, we've gone to two and a half with the Rays leading two nothing.
this game today and all season. Tires Plus donates $100 to the Pediatric Cancer Foundation for every Tampa Bay Rays home run televised on Sun Sports. Steven Sousa Jr., who's hit four home runs so far this year, leads off. He'll be followed by Drupal Cabrera and then Evan Longoria. After the first pitch, fouling it back, strike one. And did you see where that pitch was? Another pitch cutting in on the right handed hitter. Burley trying to keep this Rays lineup from getting extension early, then go to work away. Ground ball sharply hit and threw into center. Souza makes a quick turn, thought about two, and decides <laughs> to get back. He went to the Kevin Kiermeyer school of base running. I'll tell you, that, I, I, I love that. I, I love that aggressiveness out of the box by the. You put so much pressure on the defense. They know they've got to come up with this ball clean. And the way this Toronto Blue Jay outfield has been going about their business, why not? And look at this. And watch the aggressive turn here. Thinking, okay, maybe, maybe. Uh, thought better of it. Smart. Well, he had a couple outfielders there who had to move laterally to get to that ball. So that's what he's thinking. If they have to move that way and there's any little glitch there, he's got a chance. One another count to Asdrubal Cabrera. Cabrera fouled out to first in the first. Lead off man aboard for the second time in the first three innings for the Rays. Looked it into center. Pilar makes this catch. Brings up Evan Longoria. Evan started last night's game hitting 218. He's hitting 283 right now. He's gone five for his last five. Evan. A little tamper. That could be trouble, but it's going to be foul. Could you imagine? That would have been six for his last six. Three of them, by the way, would have been balls that were well placed. Yes. Not, maybe not well struck. He had a couple. Well, he had that bloop down the right field line in the first inning in yesterday's game that hit on the the chalk or the paint, whatever you want to call it. Yep. And then he got it started in the eighth inning with a little flare to right. Take advantage. We'll take them all. <laughs> Absolutely, because that one that you hit on the nose, yep. line drive to the you know left fielder. So I've got one coming back to me at some point. That's going to be in there. Cut off by Saunders. Over to third goes Sousa. And it's first and third. So another hit for Longoria. Six consecutive hits here in the last two games. Change up. Middle down. Evan stays on it. Inside of it. And just rifles that ball out into right field. I'll tell you. Burley's working fast. These Rays hitters are ready to swing. Put constant pressure on the Blue Jay left hander. Well, here's Logan Forsyth, who's now 9 out of 20 in his career against Burley. Pops it up. That pitch got in on him, and he pops out to the shortstop going. It's really amazing. A time and a half through the lineup now. How many times he started out the right handers with that little cutter in even Kevin Kiermaier the first pitch to him was a fastball in That one to his benefit is Forsyth can't get extension can't drive it Now James Loney 
first and third. Rays left a man at second in the second inning, and Loney lets a fly ball short left, and Pompey had him positioned, and he got him on another pitch in. Two nothing Rays. By a special guest, Dr. Alan Liss, CEO and president of the incredible Moffitt Cancer Center. And Dr. Liss, let's start by talking about a big event. We know about Miles from Moffitt. It's right around the corner again, huh? Yeah, it's going to be on May 9th and Saturday, and uh, we're looking forward to this. Last year, we had 7,500 participants, which is our max, but we want to get beyond that this year with some virtual participants, too. The 2015 PNC Bank Moffitt, uh, Miles for Moffitt run coming up on May 9th. What is so, why is it so important for PNC Bank, for the Tampa Bay Rays to get behind this program? Yeah, we couldn't do this without them. Without those sponsors, that's what really pays for the race. And by doing that, every dime and every, every dollar that we raise goes directly for the search. So nothing goes to, for, the, for participation in the race. And then who participates in this race? You know, we have uh, cancer survivors. We have families, caregivers, friends. Just about anybody who's been touched by cancer participates in the race. Uh, we have a survivor celebration afterwards, and uh, uh, Gerdau, uh, International Steel Company here in town, supports that. They had over 200 people participating in the race last year. Uh, number one was AutoNation. They had 360 people participating in the race. That's great that you, you get corporations and companies involved like that. Um, for all the proceeds that you raise, uh, incredible uh, Moffitt Cancer Center over there at USF. Tell us about what, what it goes into. Yeah, all the money that we raise from Miles from Moffitt goes towards research, uh, particularly for young investigators uh, so they can get seed money for new projects or funding projects that are a little bit out of the box where traditional funding may not take that kind of a risk. Uh, so last year, I think we had some funding for new targets, uh, for therapeutic targets in leukemia, for example, biomarkers for early detection of lung cancer, uh, fertility preservation, uh, and many others. Dr. Liss, it's a pleasure talking to you, and we love the work you do over there at Moffitt. Have a great Miles for Moffitt run on May 9th. Thank you, Todd. We're looking forward to it. All right, that's Dr. Alan Liss. We will send it back to you, Dwayne, but you can go to milesformoffitt.com for more information. All right, thank you very much. Important work right there indeed. So Beckham take care of the ground ball by Donaldson to start the fourth inning, one away. And Edwin Encarnacion, who walked in the first. Archer gave up a couple base runners in the first on a two out single by Donaldson, and then the walk to Encarnacion. And nothing since then. So the strike. Archer's retired eight in a row since the walk to Encarnacion. 
And we're seeing more and more of these pitches getting to the spot. Chris Watson like that. Yeah, how about that? That's perfect. Now that ball comes out of his hand. Looks like it's going to be just above the knees, middle of the plate, and then it just takes a quick left-hand turn. The great thing about that pitch is that he can throw that another one right off of that. He's going to go with a fastball here and just take it a little further off the plate. Two balls, two strikes. Good 90s fastball. Holds the count at two and two. And Carnacion, 34 home runs last year. In 128 games. A good part of the season and takes this one for out on it's the fifth strikeout. The slider and a call third strike. Get in on the action with exclusive on field seating in the Papa John's bullpen box. Host your group of 50 to 85 in the private party area. And Make long lasting memories to reserve the Papa John's bullpen box contact group sales at 888 fan rays or email group sales at raysbaseball.com. Limited dates remain. Smoke goes after the first pitch and pops it foul. That's Beckham after it. He makes the catch. Rays has a shift on a one, two, three, four, two nothing Rays. Brought to you by Toyota. Let's go places. And by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Visit us at Geico.com or call 1 800 947 Auto. Gray's put two up in the first. They lead 2 0 as we move into the bottom of the fourth with Tim Beckham leading off against Mark Burley. He shoots it down the left field line. That ball is foul. Well, Beckham on the first pitch. Got the slider in and foul just a little bit. If we're sitting up here noticing that Burley's starting everybody in, I'm sure that these Rays hitters know that too. And Tim Beckham was ready to go. Oh, that close. Are you kidding me? If they would have just painted those in the in the winter in yeah. the offseason, he'd have caught that outer shell and been well, a home run. Let's move that top pipe in left field and then attach it to the foul side of the pole. He's got a home run for sure. You talk about coming close. Yeah. How about that? Just take that top pipe off and attach it to the foul pole. He's got 
two more home runs. Yeah, why? I mean, really, at the top of the wall, is there any reason you have to go double barrel action? <laughs> I mean, it looks cool. It's costing Tim Beckham a dinger. Liner into left, so he's going to settle for a base hit. On a 2 1 pitch, that leads off the bottom of the fourth. It's so impressive with what Tim Beckham has been able to do for the Rays here in the first three weeks of the season, primarily coming off the bench. You know, he's been pinch hitter extraordinaire, has been in the lineup. Obviously, you want to get that bat in a little more often. DH in this series, shortstop today. Kevin Kiermaier fouling it back. They don't take liberties with Burley on the mound. And if you're not a base dealer, you lead off Little League style. <laughs> Keep that foot on the bag. And Beckham. No attempts at running against Burley this year in his first three starts. There's a good reason. One more pickoff and he'll hit triple digits. And a foul ball back. 0 oh 2. He's given up in his career, he's given up 59 stolen bases. With 79 caught stealing yeah. and 99 pickoffs. Yeah. 59 stolen bases over his entire career. Which, what is it now? 14 straight years of double digit wins and at least 200 yeah. innings pitched. 200 innings every year. Left side, this is Donaldson. Where's he going to go? Everybody's safe. Well, this Blue Jay defense has really caused Mark Burley to have to work extra hard. You know, this was a cutter in that took a, a wicked bounce here. You see it check up a little bit. Donaldson has to reach for it, and his first thought was second base. Not going to be able to do that. And Kiermeyer, you're not going to be able to readjust your sights and get him at first. And so he never really had a hold of that baseball either. It goes as an infield hit. Here's Rene Rivera. Two men on, nobody out. And Rivera's jumping on that first pitch in there and hitting it well foul. Uh, another race hitter anticipating that first pitch in gets another cutter gets the head out now that's the one thing going for Burley if you are going to start a guy with that pitch if you get it to that spot very difficult to keep fair we've seen that with Beckham and now with Rivera a little looper that's going to fall for a base hit Travis runs it down and the bases are loaded Wow. Boy, if you're Burley, you got to be talking to yourself now. I mean, what what else could you do? You know, the, the last two hitters, complete jam shots. This ball way in on Rivera. And this is the result. An infield hit that drops over the head of the first baseman on the infield dirt. Base is loaded with nobody out, and Brandon Geyer who opened the race first with a home run is the hitter. Fly ball into left. Pompey's there to make the catch. Tag at third. Beckham heads to the plate with the third run of the game. RBI number two of the afternoon for Geyer. Another runner's hold at first and second. Well, he didn't waste any time either. You know, two things that, have, that we highlighted in this game early on. Number one, opposing offense is attacking the first pitch off Burley. How many first pitch swings have we seen tonight? A ton. A ton of 
first pitch swings. And oh, by the way, Burley has started almost everybody with something in. The lefties, a fastball in. The righties, the little cutter in. And it's been difficult to get a count of more than uh, two or three pitches. About two thirds of the at bats have been just two pitch at bats. Steven Souza Jr. takes a strike in there. We can just sit back. We don't need to talk anymore. Let's just <laughs> let this game play itself out. We've already told you what's going to happen. <laughs> Souza opened the third with a base hit. Ground ball third. Donaldson to Travis out there and at first for the double play. Five, four, three. Rays get one through four. It's three nothing Rays. They've out hit the Blue Jays eight to one. Chris Archer has made 60 pitches through four. He gave up a two out single to Donaldson in the first and then walked in Carnacion and nothing since then. He's retired 10 in a row. Has five strikeouts in this game and we take a look at that Toyota trend on the leaderboard in American League strikeouts. Chris Archer topping an impressive list of pitchers there with 35. Saunders swings and he misses on a changeup. Right now, Archer's earned run average has dropped below one, at 0.92. Foresight throws out Saunders. Well, the way that he has thrown the baseball, it, that's not surprising. As low as that is, it's really not surprising. He has just been absolutely dominant and has really settled in nicely in this game after, you know, that first inning plus trying to get a feel for all of his pitches. Pompey puts down a bunt and it's foul. Strike one. Well, he came into the game with an earned run average of 1.07. And he was two and two. Well, that, that's the part that, that really hurts. You know, his last start against the Yankees, you know, he or sorry, against Boston, that one run, one unearned run. Yep. You know, and that's need some help sometimes. As dominant as he's been. Because you're right, tough to be as good as he's been and be even up in the record. Hot shot, that's fair. Up the right side toward the corner. Pompey digs for two and will stop with a double. 
That stops the streak at 11 in a row. The second hit given up by Archer. Well, he's able to keep this. This is a slider. This slider stayed up, was a little bit flat. Gave Pompey a good look at it and hit it hard enough. Can get it by Loney without a dive. Here's the center fielder, Kevin Pilar. Second time in this game, the Blue Jays have placed a man at second base. Fastball is a strike to Pilar. Wrapping up the series and the homestand with the Blue Jays in here. He will be headed for a three city road trip. Nine games, ten days. Pilar missed the slider one and two. We've, we saw a similar swing like that from Kevin Pilar up in Toronto. Just a hard time recognizing that pitch when Chris Archer executes it. And he did go. Jordan Baker down at first confirms it. Now Kevin Pillar just having a hard time recognizing. The Chris Archer slider and here again he starts to go realizes too late and did go too far right call. Two outs with Pompey on second for the number nine hitter shortstop Ryan Goins. Archer made 23 pitches in the first inning, but since then his pitch count has been very good. 15 in the second, 10 in the third, 12 in the fourth. This will be his 10th pitch of this inning. 2 and 0. Oh. And a strike. Ground ball back to the man. Archer halfway to first and makes the toss. One out double, that man is left on base. The Rays will have Cabrera, Longoria, and Forsyth do in the bottom of the fifth.
That's Dribble Cabrera in the box to lead off the bottom of the fifth. The pitch, a fastball into him, and foul ball. Longoria will be next. And then Forsyth. Oh, two, two quick strikes to Cabrera. Burley moving the ball around here in the first two pitches. One in, one away. And strike three call. Well, fastball at 85. Third strikeout posted by Burley. Well, this fastball in. Maybe in a little bit too far off the plate. Now he's definitely made the Rays aware of that. Going to try to come in there again all night long. Evan Longoria is two for two and has six consecutive hits coming off a four for four night last night. It's one and one. Two balls and a strike. Two and two to Evan. Team record for most consecutive hits is eight. Fletcher, you have Jerry Meals at third. Now here's the question. <laughs> As Kevin Cass comes out to talk with Meals, just review Fletcher it, get it over with. Safe. Yeah. Here's the play. You can see, well, looked like it got the, the front, maybe another angle will show it. Let's see if Travis's glove here gets to Evans' shoe. And there was a pause. Jerry Meals said out. Andy Flesher said safe. Looked like he absolutely was out. Slid right into the glove. <laughs> How about this? Yeah, he got him. Well, there was. There's long pause before there was any call. There's Andy Fletcher. Kind of waiting around. Jerry Meals called out. Fletcher calls safe, and now everybody's confused. <laughs> yeah, both arms out meant two different things when Fletcher put his arms out and Burley put his arms out. <laughs> One said safe, the other said what? And then Meals over in third said, no, he's out. <laughs> How about that? So it's a single, and now the bases are empty with two outs. You know, you may not agree with every call that these umpires make, but very rarely do you see them not on the ready, not in position to make a call. There was no, Jerry Meals is calling them out from third base. Now, he was right, but he, he's not exactly on top of things. And Andy Fletcher, he took a guess. <laughs> so what are the other? What is it? Well, we got a 50-50 chance. <laughs> now he's wishing he had best two out of three. Yeah. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, the count is still one and two. <laughs> the 
this one back off Burley who recovers and makes the throw to first to get Forsyth. So Burley walks off apparently all right. No runs ahead. Nobody left. We're through five innings. It's three nothing Tampa Bay. Three to nothing. First run came on the leadoff homer in the first from Brandon Geyer. Two outs later, Lagoria single and Logan Forsyth doubled him home. A little mix up out there in short right field. Chris Archer's pretty much taking care of the rest through five innings. 72 pitches of shutout baseball, just two hits. Well, Travis, the leadoff man, takes a strike. Travis twice uh, struck out on a slider. Two of the six strikeouts recorded by Archer. Chopped to shortstop. Beckham loves and throws. One gone. He'll flip over the limited edition Ray's tumbler. You'll get that when you buy a race flex pack starting at just $59. Save up to 50% and pick any three, six, or nine games. No blackout dates. Plus, get half off parking when you use the fun loaded to your race card. Everything tastes better in an official race tumbler. Get yours at racebaseball.com or call 888 Fan Rays. Russell Martin, the catcher. Strike one. Boy, Archer has averaged a little over 14 pitches an inning this year. And despite a 23 pitch first inning, he's averaging just under 15 pitches an inning today. And 15 is the gold standard. That's what you would shoot for each and every time for a season. Very few guys able to crack that barrier. And to be able to do it, you know, with Chris being able to do that as the last half inning when he was out there, the strikeout numbers, even more impressive mm -hmm. to be efficient and strikeout heavy. And what's really helped him this year, coming into this game, he had 30 strikeouts, 36 now. He's walked only six all year. Oh, and that was the knock on him through the minor leagues. Great arm, but no command. He's slowly but surely in his short stint here with the Rays, a couple of years now, has really refined that command. That's a strike on the outside corner. Got him looking. 
Uh, Chris Archer, as you see him rip that slider, one of the most, and that's not even one of his better ones, but one of the most devastating pitches in the game today, the Chris Archer slider. Throws it hard, gets great depth with it. It's tough to pick up. Josh Donaldson. Slider was high, one ball, no strikes. That slider down and a swing and a miss. One and one. Two outs, base is empty. Ninety five on the fastball out of the zone up. Couple of base runners in the first, another one on the double in the fifth by Pompey. That's been it. Two one sky in the left center. Geyers there. One, two, three, go the Blue Jays. We're through five and a half. Three nothing race. The sixth inning. Don't forget, you have owning opportunities up until May 8th for the franchise four. Here's the deal on MLB.com slash franchise four. You can vote for who you think is the Mount Rushmore of Tampa Bay Rays history. Right now, the leading vote getters, Evelyn Longoria, David Price, James Shields, and Ben Zobris. Other quality candidates there. You can also write in your vote. Go to MLB.com slash franchise four, guys. Well, there's James Loney going after the first pitch, delivering a base hit back into center field. So Loney threw three at bats. We talked about how the Rays are going after the first or second pitch here against Burley. Loney's had three at bats. He's seen four pitches. Well, oh, that that's across the board. Look what Mark Burley's been able to accomplish in 68 pitches. He's gotten five innings worth of outs. He's given up 10 hits. Tim Beckham. The pitch is a strike. That locked Tim Beckham up. He started him away. Everybody take note. Now 
Ground ball foul outside of third. And it's 0 2. Well, Beckham with two strikes on him. Came into the game hitting 321 with two strikes and a count. And there's a base hit the other way. An 0 2 pitch. Beckham, another hit with two strikes. Well, Tim Beckham, a nice job of trying to protect there with two strikes. And Mark Burley made a mistake. He left this fastball right out over the plate. He wants to close him in, and it's up and out over. And Tim Beckham in that survival mode just lets that ball come into the zone. He shortens up the swing. And that was something that he said in, in talking to Todd Callis said that he is really concentrating on just trying to get the barrel of the bat to the baseball and be short with the swing. Well, you can do that when you're down in the count 0 and 2 and it was very effective there. Kevin Kiermeyer takes a strike. Kevin's one out of two had an infield hit in the fourth to reached on Pompey's error on the drop ball in left field back in the second inning. Now the bunt and a good one. Donaldson up to the first not in time. Bases are loaded. Kiermaier butts his way on and the Rays have the makings of getting a few more runs. Well he did drop it down right in between Burley and Donaldson a little indecision by both of them and that's too long for Kiermaier. Nobody out. Marco Estrada has started to loosen in the bullpen down the left field side for Toronto. Ground ball, third base, out at the plate, and a double pump and out at first. So Rivera on the first pitch grounds into a double play. Now that was just tailor made for Mark Burley. He got Rivera out in front, Donaldson a quick throw, and then Russell Martin could kind of recalibrate. Double pump and still get Rivera down to first base. Beckham winds up at third, Kiermeyer at second. And if the Rays are to cash in, Geyer is going to have to do something significant with two outs. Only homer to start this game. And he takes the ball. But you're right. I mean, you want to. You're going for the series sweep. You want to make it a no doubter. And you've had some opportunities. Bases loaded, nobody out. Another one here. I want to go without putting something on the board. Golden opportunities. The pitch moving in on Geyer, and he fouled it. That's Estrada. Ground ball, that's going to go through. Bates hit into left. One run is home. Two runs home. Big base hit by Geyer. There's something significant. Chasing on Beckham and Kiermaier. And the Rays lead by five. Now that's a way to pick up your team right there. Bases loaded, nobody out on the verge of going scoreless and a changeup that stayed up. And Brandon Geyer just wraps that ball, able to get it outside of the dive of Ryan Goins. Four runs batted in for Geyer in this game. Sousa takes the pitch low. Geyer now six of 17 in his career against Burley. One and one. Five runs, 13 hits for the Rays. One and 
and two. Slider in off the plate. So Geyer with the four runs batted in, a career high for him. And a full count on Susan Jr. Pitch is outside. Suzu works the walk. Two men on base again for the Rays, and here comes John Gibbons. That's going to be all for Mark Burley today. We'll be back with a pitching change in a moment. is brought to you by courtesy Toyota. You'll love what we do for you. And by Checkers. Get Checkers Authentic Philly Cheese Steak or try the new Meatball Sub. Pick yours two for five bucks. Burley calls it a day. 83 pitches for Burley. He's given up five runs all earned. Responsible for two on as he leaves. Three strikeouts in a walk, 13 hits in five and two thirds. And Marco Estrada makes his fifth appearance. He faces as Rubel Cabrera. A high popper. Travis had trouble finding it. Now locates it and makes the catch. So the Rays add to their lead. Big hit by Brandon Geyer driving in two. And the Rays lead 5 0.
the drop. And here's what's coming up tomorrow night on Rage Live. The pregame show presented by your Gulf Coast Honda. We'll be live from New York with Todd Callis and Brian Anderson. They'll be hosting the show. Todd will sit down with Kevin Cash. Whoa, 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 whoa. What what did you just say? Well, that's what it says. That is what it says. Mm -hmm. Edwin Encarnacion takes a strike. The seventh inning is underway. By the way, happy birthday. We're going to uh, the Big Apple. There's a great play by Longoria down at third. And a fine scoop at first by Loney. They like couldn't have come at a better quarter. time. <laughs> Absolutely couldn't have come at a better time. Thanks, gentlemen, for hooking me up there. Complete deflection right here. Nice job by Evan Longoria flashing that glove and then gets up low throw. Not an easy scoop here either for Loney. Like a goalie. Yeah, pitchers love that. Third and first. Make a great stop and then you love the great play on the other side. Well, you know, that's kind of what we were talking about last night mm -hmm. about James Loney truly one of the defenders because of the nature of his position that can make those around him better. And if you have a lesser first baseman right there, that's an E5. Yep. And now with that guy. One strike to count to the Toronto first baseman, Justin Smoke. Lines it into center and Kiermaier's there to make the catch. Hey, we can always revisit your special day, you know. You're supposed to not start like really big important stories with two outs. Yeah, until the guy gets in the box, he's not in the box yet. <laughs> so we're going to New York. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Yeah. So I, BA in the BA and the Big Apple for your birthday. So yeah. BA in the BA for his birthday. It's going to be it's it's going to be quite the time. <laughs> That's all I can tell you. <laughs> Michael Saunders takes a strike. This birthday Paul snuck Cruz up looking though. forward to it. Well, they've been pretty quiet about it. That's why I thought we could sneak this one through. No one would know. Question is how late does the pizza get there? Yeah. Yeah. Well. Depends on when we get in. <laughs> Low, two and one. So it just slipped up on you. It Is really did. Yeah, I, I mean honestly, because listen, my birthday is April 26th. Obviously, that's during the baseball season. Yeah. You're, you know, you we're in a hotel in Seattle. You know, you you don't it never really paid attention because you never really had a birthday. So it just it's never been high on the on the priority list. And so this week it kind of snuck up, and then I get into a text war with my daughter this morning. How great is that? Yeah, it was, that was good. I'll, I'll take that part up. And so that's been going on even through the game. 3 1, and right there up the middle is the shortstop, Beckham. Saunders is out, thanks to the shift. And the Rays lead 5 to nothing. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, at this time we ask for you.
summary brought to you by Golden Diamond Swords. Chris Archer has given the Rays seven innings, 93 pitches of shutout baseball. Brandon Geyer driving in four runs, a career high for him. Four of the five RBIs belong to Geyer. He had a game earlier in which he had driven in three. Lowe's never stop improving. Devin Longoria with four hits last night has three hits in this game. He needs one more to tie Ty Wiggins and an Aubrey Huff for the club record. It's been quite the run that Evan has been on. Listen, it, we, we know that this Rays offense is not going to go where it wants to without Evan Longoria being a huge part of it. In the last two nights, he's kicked it into high gear. Well, Evan will be trying to get his eighth consecutive hit, and he'll face Marco Estrada. He's the guy who hit Longoria in the hip up in Toronto. Both Estrada and Evan out of Long Beach State. And the first pitch is away from him this time. One ball, no strikes. <laughs> That pitch that Estrada hit Longoria with on the left hip. Oh, and, and, you know, he's going in there. He's going to hit him on purpose. He keeps it low, but it ends up catching Evan right in the side of that hip. I mean, you could hear the smack. That's not a fun place to get hit. Actually, I'm not sure if there's any fun place to get hit, but it's <laughs> still <laughs> that's one of the bad places. Yeah, and, and out of recognition of the two sharing the commonality of Long Beach State, he hit him in the hip instead of up and in somewhere. Right. But he did hit him square. Wow. Evan walks to lead off the seventh inning. So he's on base for the eighth consecutive time. Wigan had had that run of eight consecutive hits in July of 07, Aubrey Huff in September of 04. So Evan still with seven consecutive hits. Now he's put a walk in that. Uh, Streak. Here's Logan Forsythe. Outside, 1 0. Well, would you pitch to him? Seven for his last seven. I may walk him too. <laughs> Logan looks at a strike. One one. Two balls, two strikes. And Andres throwing in the bullpen for the Rays. Picked up his first major league save a couple nights ago, working three strong innings. Stayed up and in, and it's a little early on the off speed pitch. James Loney on deck. Longoria at first base. 
won four times last night, four times today. Check swing and a hopper. Donaldson's going to go to first, low throw, and it's dug out there by Smoke. Norman moves to second. I'll tell you what, that play almost didn't get made. Just a little bit of miscommunication. Josh Donaldson out there with Ryan Goins, not his normal partner out there at shortstop. That's Jose Reyes, who's not in the lineup. James Loney, single in the sixth inning. And a big double in the eighth inning last night. Number to third. Donaldson more routine this time. So two gone. Braves will begin the road trip tomorrow night in New York. We'll be with you at 630. Nathan Carnes will be after his second win of the year. He'll go up against Adam Warren. The first game of a nine game road trip. It begins in New York, in Baltimore, and Boston. Tell you what, when that trip ends, you're, you're going to be about American League East and out. <laughs> uh, uncle, see somebody else. Yep. Beckham takes a pitch outside. He is two for three with two runs scored. Well, the one thing is, is, is that's been true for everybody in the division. It's, it's almost been like round robin play for the month of April. Two and zero. Oh. Magoria walked. He's now at second. Evan. Reaching base eight consecutive times. The club record for that is nine. Held by the player formerly known as BJ Upton, now Melvin Upton Jr. So Longoria, with his next plate appearance, could find himself uh, tying two records at the same time. If he got a base hit, that would be eight consecutive hits and nine consecutive. Times reaching base. Two and one. Rays have five runs, 13 hits. Toronto, no runs, two hits. Three and one. Kiermaier would be next if Beckham could keep the inning going. Three and two. Strata not giving in there with that change up behind in the count three and one. Change up for him, a prominent pitch. Well, it's been the best pitch in this sequence here with Beckham. That's where he's gotten both of his strikes. And let's see if he goes back to it here in a full count. With a fastball, a couple of walks in the inning, a couple of ground balls, and Kevin Kiermeyer is on his way to the plate. Now, yeah, following this coming road trip, the Rays will be home. It'll be May, and they'll be home against the Texas Rangers, and then back into the East against the Yankees. Just a respite here with that series against Texas 
And then the Yankees in. Then it'll be a while. Ground ball to first by Kiermeyer comes up on smoke. Estrada covers and we're through seven five nothing Tampa Bay. Take a look at Chris Archer in his line today. Finished after 93 pitches of two hit shutout baseball, seven innings, seven strikeouts, and one walk. Well, he, he got it going early, settled into the game nicely, and then here comes the fastball, here comes the slider. He was once again very good with both pitches and again throws up just a dominant line. Two hits given up, not a run, punches out seven. High def highlights presented by H.H. H. Gregg and Matt Andrees will be the new pitcher. He faces Pompey and the pitch is down. Pompey, Pilar, and Goins facing Andrees. High popper. Left field line, Geyer closing, so it's back up, and neither one will get it. Geyer got a glove on it. A near collision between the Rays shortstop and the left fielder. Boy, that, that's where communication is key, key because you've got both of these guys running a long way for this ball. You see Beckham, Geyer coming in, and all of a sudden at the last minute, they're trying to avoid each other and catch the baseball. That is not easy. Got some. Distraction interference and that ball right off the glove of Geyer. That's tough too for either one of them to be calling because you start calling the ball when you're sure you can get it. I don't know if either one of them were sure they were going to get there. Pompey sends one to center field. Kiermeyer to the edge of the turf in front of the track. One gone. But for Archer now, this is his fifth start. Four consecutive starts without giving up an earned run. He gave up nary a run today. And the first pitcher in the American League to accomplish that since Zach Greinke in 2009. His earned run average down to 0 0.84. Kevin Pilar fouls it away. One strike. Two. And Reese pitched three innings Friday. Picked up the save.
There's strike three call. And Reese at 92 with that fastball. You see a little bit of late movement there, and then Kevin Pilar thinking that that ball is in, especially with the way that Rivera caught it. You can see clearly that ball catching plenty of the plate. Here's the shortstop, Ryan Goins. It's foul. Back at third, strike one. Set in front of center fielder Kevin Kiermeyer. Two out single. And hit number three for the Blue Jays. Second baseman, Devin Travis. Travis rolls it to second. Forsyth throws him out. Devin Travis ends the top of the eighth. Five nothing Rays. And here is today's great moment in Rays history presented by Geico. On this day in 2012, Brandon Allen belts a pinch hit walk off home run in his first official at bat for the Rays. It's the fourth pinch hit walk off home run in franchise history. Brandon Allen, the pride of Montgomery, Texas. There in a loop, the new pitcher for the Toronto Blue Jays. His first pitch is a strike call to Rene Rivera. One and one. Two strikes. Rivera had a base hit back in the fourth. He is one for three. Now facing the lefty. Burley worked five and two thirds. Estrada pitched an inning at a third, and now it's the lefty loop. As 
Rivera reaching on that one on the off speed. He's out on strikes. Let's check in with Emily Austin. Hey, thanks, Dwayne. We have a lot coming your way post game. The Braves live presented by Checkers. Todd and Orestes will be up in at the desk with a breakdown of this hopefully series sweep of the Toronto Blue Jays. I'll be in the clubhouse with interviews from Kevin Cash, Chris Archer on the series as well. And guys, we'll probably check in with you as well post game. We'll look forward to the whole thing immediately following the completion of our game here. Rays wrapping up this homestand with this series against the Blue Jays. Two strikes the count on Brandon Geyer, who got it all started for the Rays with a leadoff home run in the first inning, connecting off Mark Burley. Pitch coming in on Geyer and fouls it. Rays scored all five of their runs off Burley. One ball, two strikes. Well, this Rays offense against Mark Burley, they just had him under pressure throughout. Constant base runners finding ways. You know, some of the hits, not all of them were pretty, but they just kept the pressure on and finally were able to break through and stretch it out to five runs. Geyer founds another one out of play. Into the Rays dugout. Keeping some of his teammates on their toes. And protect the pitchers down there. That's a pretty good neighborhood of starting pitching right there. Two and two. Jake Odorizzi on the far right. Drew Smiley. Good to have him back active and hoping. And in the not too distant future, we'll see Alex Cobb out there. Geyer out on strikes, back to back strikeouts by Loop. Two gone, bases empty for Steven Souza Jr. Murray's right fielder has been on twice. Single to center in the third, walked in the sixth. Strikes. Two and oh. Bottom of the eighth. Two and one at off speed. And Sousa well out in front. Three and one. And the Rays will be headed into New York, Baltimore, and Boston on the road trip. Sousa fouls that pitch back. So the count is full. Jacoby Ellsbury had left their game. With uh, uh, stiffness in his hip. And Girardi's thinking he might be able to play in their game tonight. Call third strike on Sousa. We go to the ninth. It's 5 0 Rays.
by Tampa Bay Radiation Oncology with Cancer Strike, Strike Back with Cyberknife. Available exclusively at Tampa Bay Radiation Oncology by Kubota. For more information or to find a participating dealer, go to FloridaKubotaDealers.com. And by your Gulf Coast Honda Dealers. And Andres worked the eighth out here to work the ninth with Russell Martin leading off. Martin fouls the pitch. The slider was up a bit and he fouled it back. Strike one. Oh. Oh, two. It's a nice job of making the adjustment and zoning that pitch down and away. Popped up, foul, going to carry out a play. Great start of the day, 10 and 8. The Yankees 10 and 8, and Boston 10 and 8. The Yankees play host to the Mets tonight. And the Orioles. We have a big lead, 10 to nothing at home on the Red Sox right now in the top of the sixth inning. Well, that was after that come from behind victory in last night's game. Mm -hmm. A couple lead changes late. Well, you see Rivera there telling Andres expand that zone. That's what those arms out mean. He just missed the base hit up the right side that time, Martin. Just foul. Well, and you know what, Rivera, the, the message he's trying to give Andres here is listen, you, you're up 0 and 2. You've got a guy in swing mode. That let's go ahead and get this thing off the plate a little bit. See if he's willing to chase. If not, we can always come back. We're in that kind of a position with the count. But you keep feeding balls out over the plate. Eventually, Martin has a chance to come through. He wants this in. Figures Martin's leaning. Hot shot to short that comes up on Beckham. That ball was smoked to shortstop, and Beckham found himself in a defensive position. And when you take a look at the pitch location, he wants this ball in. You're not going to be able to see it here, but you take a, a look at where that pitch was. The, Rene Rivera figure and Russell Martin is leaning out over the plate. So let's go fastball in. Look where it ends up. Middle. And that's why that ball was scalded. It's the fourth hit of the game for Toronto. And here's Josh Donaldson. It's inside 1 and 0. Tapper and Reese is going to have to go to first and he just beat Donaldson in <laughs> that realization that there is nobody home and James Loney had come off the bag to potentially make this play and Matt Andres said I'm going to flip it uh oh now it's a foot race we'll see Looked like he got there in time that's the call on the field. And so we'll see. We'll take another look at it. I don't think that you're going to. Here's a good look at it. Look at the feet coming in. And Dries got it. Ah. 
So the play under review. Today's replay challenge brought to you by Chrysler. They make quick work of that. Out at first. And the call confirmed. Up to second base is Russell Martin. 34 seconds on that review. They're trying to get that overall average down. So you got to have some quick ones. Yep. That's what averages are all about. Edwin Encarnacion looks at a fastball too high. 1 and 0. Oh. Big cut and Encarnacion missed it. He was looking for the seats on that cut. He's just been a little off this entire series. He came in with four home runs, not much in the batting average department. And for a guy that you know hit, swings with a lot of power, he, he's been a pretty decent contact guy. He has been, you know. Yeah, you're right about that. But. He's not a big some, strikeout guy. No, no. And usually guys that are going to be 30 plus in the home run department, they're going to give you 120, 130 strikeouts at least. And he's down in that 80, 90 range. Two and two. <laughs> one on, one out. Archer was very good today. Again, seven shutout innings. Andrees in there. One on, one out in the ninth. Trying to finish this one off. Pitch up and a big cut by Encarnacion at the fastball, clocking in around 92. Justin Smoke is on deck. Ball for the shortstop Beckham. His throw is right there to get in Carnacion, who is 0 for 3 in the second out in the ninth. And now it'll be Justin Smoke. First baseman, Justin Smoke. Smoke homered off Andres here in the game on Friday when the Rays had that 12 to 2 lead that finished. At 12 to 3. Oh. Strike the count. Third base goes Martin with the shift on and nobody over there and this time it was less than dramatic the move up to third. Ground ball and it's going to get past Longoria and head into center field for a base hit and that scores Martin to make it five to one. Making a bid, and that ball is able to just squeeze underneath the glove. So Smoke picks up a run batted in. Five to one. And the hitter is Michael Saunders. Brad Boxberger starts to loosen.
Strike one to Saunders. Tapper left side. Longoria will make the throw to first. It's wide and it pulls Loney off the bag. Well, that was the one to end it, but a wide throw will keep it going. Well, you're, you're, you know, Evan Longoria's got to cut a long way to get that ball, and he's throwing kind of across his body. Not an easy throw, but we've seen him make it time and time again. Here it is. Got to kind of open up and get that ball over there, and it just, he just pulled it with him. Pulled so it with the body. The error on Longoria keeps it going. Dalton Pompey will be the hitter. He shoots it foul up the right side. Out of play for a strike. Pompey doubled up the right field line in the fifth inning. One and one. Have to get an extra out in this inning. Now one and two. The Toronto Blue Jays five to one to complete the three game sweep. Chris Archer will get the win his third of the year. He's three and two. He's three and two with an earned run average of 0 0.84 on the year. Mark Burley the loss. He is three and one. Twenty one thousand one hundred seven here. Two hours and 23 minutes to play this game. For the Rays, five runs, 13 hits, an error, and nine left. For the Blue Jays, a run, five hits, one error, and six men left on base. And so the Rays go to 11 and 8 on the year. And for the moment, they are in first place in the American League East all alone. They're a half game ahead of New York and a half game ahead of Boston and they have a chance to be a full game ahead of Boston. The Orioles have just added a run and now lead 11 to nothing over Boston in their game at Baltimore. Race winners here five to one. Let's go to the field for Todd Callis. Dwayne, thanks with Evan Longoria. Evan, when you look back to the middle of this homestand, you're down 5-1, possibly losing your fish straight game. Quite a turnaround for this squad. Yeah, I mean, um, starts with the starting pitching. You know, they um, given us a chance, obviously, to score some runs. And um, offensively, we're, uh, we're top to bottom putting together good at bats. So it's been fun to watch. You guys pounded out 13 hits all against Mark Burley today. It seemed like you were aggressive in the count. Was that the key, not letting him get ahead? Yeah, I mean, um, we know that he's a guy that can pitch on the corners, and uh, when he's getting those pitches, he can expand and put it where he wants. So um, the plan going in was to just uh, be aggressive early and try and hit those early strikes. And um, sometimes you square them up and they go right at guys, and, um, and today they were finding holes. Funny how this game works. It doesn't seem like that long ago you were trying to get over 200. Now you're over 300 with seven straight hits. Using the whole field today, is that when things are going well? Yeah, I mean, um, just uh, a couple of good at-bats early there in the series. Um, scored some balls up, and uh, 
Um, sometimes it just gets rolling. You see the ball a little bit better. And um, like I said, when the whole offense is going, it makes it easier to hit. You've seen a lot of good pitchers here. Is this run that Chris Archer's on about as good as you've seen? He's, he's been the backbone of the staff. I mean, that's, uh, I think, obviously the opening day starter, you know, the guy that we uh, – Look to and counted on to be that guy that's the stopper and goes out there and and um, and and gets us back in the right direction and he's really done that. I mean, he's been really impressive. Final question, Evan. You finally get two guys off the DL and Drew Smiley and James Loney. For you guys to be sitting here right now, 11 and 8, what are your thoughts? Um, just excited at the way we're playing right now. You know, I, I think it's it's one of those uh, times where you just enjoy uh, it going good and and uh, the success that you're having right now and on a, on a daily basis. Uh, just try and go out and repeat those performances. Nice job today. Okay, thank you. All right, guys, back to you. All right, Todd, the Rays with a 5-1 to one victory here over the Toronto Blue Jays as Archer is impressive again on the mound, working the front seven innings. Rays will begin a road trip, a three-city trip tomorrow night. We'll be with you at 6.30 from Yankee Stadium on Sun Sports. For Brian Anderson and the rest of our crew, Dwayne Stats, hope you've enjoyed the telecast. Rays Lab, the postgame next, part of our continuing coverage.